So guys, with this OG season coming back, there's gonna be cash cups that are gonna be happening in the next couple of weeks. And in today's video, I wanna go over exactly how you guys can succeed in the solo cash cup. Now, I think this season is gonna be an absolutely amazing season for competitive simply because so many different players from older generations are back and now they're back here and they actually wanna try competing. Some of them have re-sparked their love for the game and they're interested in actually playing some solo cash cups. However, the really big advantage that a lot of modern players have is that they've been playing in all the downtime that those OG players have been gone. In today's video, I wanna highlight exactly how how you as a modern player can succeed and actually make money this season in the OG meta. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video. Let's hop right into it. So I want to obviously start off by going over all of my different game advice, go game one to game 10 and explain exactly how I think you guys should play in order to qualify. So starting off game one, yes, you should have a W key play style. This season, eliminations are huge because lobbies are a little bit more dead and everybody's going to be getting the same amount of rough placement points. My recommendation for game one would be for you guys to try and get a high kill and a high placement game, simply because game one is the game in which you have the most random lobby with the largest range of skill levels. This basically means that if you W key, even if you get eliminated, the next lobby will have an easier skill level. But if you don't get eliminated, you will have a lot of elimination and placement points. That's the main reason that a lot of pro players start off their game one with a huge elimination win. That's the ideal situation for game one. Now games two through five, I've always promoted a passive aggressive play style. I'd recommend you go for a high placement, but if you're confident in your ability to W key and identify good fights to take, go for them. However, if you're not confident and then you guys often take bad fights, I'd recommend you try to just play passive, stick to the common roots of the game. Just go for high placement games, try to rack up tons of eliminations and you should be all set. Then of course guys, game six through nine, I'd recommend you always play to your needs. So let's say you're a little bit lower on points and you guys need a really big pop off game, try to get a lot of eliminations and get a really good win. Or if you guys are higher on points, just stay consistent, keep having high placement games. Basically, this is where you guys need to assess where you are on the leaderboards and what exactly you need to get to in order to qualify. And then of course, game 10, I'd recommend you guys play it out. Basically what I mean by this is that in the last six to 10 minutes of the tournament, you guys should leave your game or you know die in the game or whatever you guys are playing. And then you guys should back out and ready up for another game and then play it out past the finishing of the tournament's time. This is where you should try to get a really Really high placement, rack up placement points, try to do really well in the game, pop off. That's the point of game 10. Now some general advice for all 10 of these games is that each cash cup is dependent on your situation. So while I would recommend this blueprint to a lot of players, and it's very helpful, the situation for your cash cup might be different. The general recommendation I have is to go into your lobby Analyze the skill of your lobby based upon how many points you have and how many people are left, and then decide whether it's worth it to play passive or aggressive. So if you guys are on really low points and you're in a lobby where everybody's dying, go in W key. People probably aren't that good in the lobby. However, vice versa, if you guys are in a lobby with pretty high points and there's tons of people left, try to play passive. You're probably gonna go up against really good players in a fight and it would not be worth it to take them. That's a general advice for the 10 games of the cash cup that I would give you. Let's hop into this season's actual meta. All right, so to start off, there's obviously gonna be a bunch of goofy items in competitive. If you guys don't remember, there's obviously gonna be the vaulting of a bunch of explosive weapons. I have that up on screen right here. So these items are not going to be in competitive in any way, shape or form. However, the meta, what I'd recommend for you guys is to use the boogie bomb. Now the boogie bomb, in my opinion right now, is the most powerful weapon in the whole game and basically gives you guys a free headshot onto your opponent if you guys have basically good aim. Now what I'd recommend you guys learn is the exact range and the depth of a boogie bomb and exactly where you guys should throw it in order to try and succeed. A lot of times people will throw boogie bombs and end up boogieing themselves and the enemy players and then kind of canceling out the whole effect and making it pretty much a 50-50. Rather, what I'd recommend is you guys understand the exact tile difference. There's a great video by Reese Hub that I'm gonna put up on screen right here. You guys should watch this. However, ideally, you guys should learn exactly how to play with the boogie bomb and learn where to throw it and kind of abuse it as a really good weapon. Now, a counter to the boogie bomb is also the bush. Now the bush basically negates your first damage shot. It's like you're wearing like an outer protective shield. I absolutely love the bush. I think it's actually a solid weapon and a very solid utility item, especially considering the fact that it's pretty much pretty common. You can find bushes anywhere on the map and it barely blocks your screen because the bush is pretty transparent as you guys are walking around. Now, of course, guys, this does depend on your situation, what time of the game it is. If you guys are focusing on W keying, whatever it may be, bushes and boogie bombs are the meta this season in competitive. Of course, guys, going into the weapons that you guys should be using, I obviously recommend the ideal loadout to be an LMG, a pump shotgun, and then of course a grappler, and then two healing items. Obviously you guys can use ARs and SMGs and stuff, but I'd recommend some form of mobility, whether that's a rift to go, a grappler, whatever it may be, anybody should have mobility in this map. There's tons of mobility items that you guys can use. There's shockwaves now. That stuff is really important. Now guys, of course there are some cases in which you may not have the ability to use a grappler or a rift to go, let's say you didn't find one. In that case, I'd recommend you guys definitely try to have an AR, an SMG, a shotgun, and then two heals. 
or if you guys just have a chug jug or one variety of heals, maybe go for a sniper or one of the other weapons. Now, I'd obviously recommend you guys try to get as many shields as you possibly can, considering that they're so rare on this season's map. But what you guys could easily do is you guys could land a POI that has mushrooms, which are an incredibly powerful resource on the map. You could land a POI like Dusty Divot, Shifty Shafts, Lonely Lodge, places that have mushrooms and you guys can easily shield up on those mushrooms and then save any minis or big pots that you guys get for the later stages of the game. That's what's really important about this right now is who's conserving their shield the best and who's rotating the best. Now, obviously guys, this is a map that we've all played on before. So we know how to go. We know how to move around. We know where to rotate, but still the fundamentals of competitive apply. Try to focus on dead side. That still definitely exists. Focus on making sure that you guys get to the dead side early, maybe basing up on high ground. There's tons of hills in this game, tons of formats of high ground. And overall, make sure that you guys are playing to the meta. And then continuing on with that section, guys, traps, which are going to be damage traps that you guys attach in boxes, are absolutely huge in box fights. Even though these traps are fairly rare, which I actually prefer, by the way, I still think that they're extremely valuable items that you guys should definitely pick up, and you can very well use them in box fights. Let's say somebody's trying to W key or spray into your box and you have a trap, let them come in and then put the trap down. You're going to get an easy 150 damage on them and you guys can easily one pump them to the head or just SMG spray them. It's a very valuable weapon. It's pretty much a free 150 tag on anybody. Absolutely crucial. One of the greatest items for competitive that gives you the biggest advantage. And on top of that, guys, the biggest weapon and the one that I'd recommend everybody try to get if possible is definitely going to be the hand cannon. If anything, I'd actually recommend that you guys have a hand cannon and a pump. The LMG is kind of your spray weapon, the hand cannon is kind of your range weapon, and then the pump is your shotgun, of course, and then maybe two heals. There's actually some cases if I'm playing passive in which I would take a hand cannon over a grappler. It's absolutely fantastic to get long range eliminations and tags, maybe play defensive, get people off your back. The hand cannon is super powerful this season. Basically though, what I'm trying to say through that section is that there's a bunch of different ways to play in this meta. There's boogie bombs, there's LMGs, there's traps, of course. There's hand cannons, there's plenty of different things. And what you guys should do is find which meta and which loadout you guys like the most, and then attach it to that blueprint for the games that I went out over before. And if you do that, guys, you're definitely going to succeed in popping off in these cash cups. But anyways, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.